Hello, my name is Jeff. This is 2A Self-Defense Law. What we do is we help people understand the law of self-defense in the simplest terms possible. We take the fear out of getting it wrong. Now, this is a dominant feature on our landscape right now. Kyle Rittenhouse, you can see him cleaning off graffiti off, I think it was a church earlier in the day. He has been charged with five felon felonies and one Class A misdemeanor. The criminal complaint is in, we have read it, and it is a narrative of self-defense. It's, it's absolutely amazing. You read this thing, you think that one of Kyle's lawyers wrote it. If you see right here, we have the Honorable Bruce E. Schroeder. He is going to be one of the judges, and what you really need to do is kind of you need to investigate the field. You need to scout what you're going to be doing. And the only thing I found on him was in 2006, this article came out, Hundreds Asked to Avoid Court of the Kenosha Judge. And there's some quotes in here I'd like to go over. Go over. Schroeder is known for his occasional fiery style, sharp tongue, and stiff sentences. He can also be unpredictable, says the defense attorney. From a defense standpoint, clients like somewhat more certainty. Many of the cases transferred out of his court landed into another judge's court. And um, Budowitz says that his, uh, his uh, reputation for being harsh is more of a matter of perception than reality. I'm not exactly sure uh, what he's, he, he's been a defensive prosecutor in the past. He did go into private practice a little bit before he went into becoming a judge back in 19... Um, 83 so he's been on the court for a very long time and he may be a little bit more sympathetic towards the prosecution because that's where he spent I think um, more he spent more years as a prosecutor rather than in private practice so it'll be interesting to, to see how uh, his attorneys Kyle's attorneys uh, um, uh, game plan toward Schroeder is going to be. Now we're going to be going over the, uh, the counts. He's going to be going through uh, six counts. Uh, the first count uh, is first degree reckless homicide use of a dangerous weapon. Joseph Rosenbaum, here he is. We're going to be talking a, lo a lot about him. It's going to be a class B felony and it's a, uh, a 60 year sentence and up to a 60 year sentence for Kyle if convicted. The next one is the second count, first degree reckless endangerment safety uses of dangerous weapon against Richard McGinnis. This is a class F felony. This would carry a 12 year sentence. Remember uh, Richard Guinness is one of the people who were was interviewing Kyle and he was following him around um, going through uh, helping people out um, for medical attention and stuff. What happened after the encounter with Joseph Rosenbaum, the initial guy, he took his shirt off and started giving first aid. He would, he, the police talked to him, the criminal complaint has uh, him interviewed, and again, it is a narrative for Kyle for self-defense. So it's going to be uh, interesting as this case goes on. The next one is first degree intentional homicide use of a dangerous weapon against Anthony Huber. This is a class A felony imprisonment for life. You can see um, Anthony right here using his skateboard to try to knock Kyle's brain out of his head. Okay, He ended up being shot in the heart. The criminal complaint also has a preliminary autopsy report. I will have that linked in the description. I recommend everybody go read it because again it is a narrative for Kyle's self-defense claim and it has um, the two deaths of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber's initial autopsy report. Next one, attempted first degree intentional homicide use of a, danger we a dangerous weapon against Gro uh, Gage Grosskreutz. This is a class B felony uh, prison sentence up to 60 years. This is the person who had the gun in his hand. It's the third person that approached Kyle and he shot him and it looked like it took most of his uh, bicep 
off. Now, let's keep on going to the count five, first degree reckless endangerment, safety use of a dangerous weapon. This is against the unknown male. This is a class F felony, um, sentence up to 12 and a half years. This is the guy who did a flying kick and tried to knock Kyle's brain out of his head. All right. Yeah, Kyle did shoot at him, and you can see in other videos of him running away. Next one. Count six, possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18. This is a class A misdemeanor. Yeah, jail time up to nine months. Kind of hard to argue this one. I think um, he's going to have to sit on this one. But everything else, I think, is a political ploy to, to stop the rioting in Kenosha. I think um, the Kenosha's prosecutor office has seen events around the nation where if they do not quickly and swiftly arrest somebody, the town turns into a bigger blaze. All right. I think this is going to hurt the United States overall if they are start going to arrest people just to appease a rioting mob. I think this is going to be not an, an individual um, thought, but more of a group thought force kind of a thing where we lose more of our individual rights every day when we cow to the mob. I want to talk a little more about the innocent standard. Now, other videos you're going to see the eminence and proportionality part of innocence, eminence, innocence, eminence, proportionality, avoidance, and reasonableness. I'm more interested in the innocent standard. People are talking a lot that he went to Kenosha to kill somebody. He was the um, uh, he was the person. He was the initial aggressor. He was the provocateur. Provocateur. I can't say that word for some reason. He was the one who was provoking people to get into a fight. We're going to go through the assumption that he was, and but this video, you're going to tell me if this kid had any criminal intent, and you look at right here, mens re, um, it is a Latin legal term, um, is the mental element of a person's intention to commit a crime or knowledge that one's action or lack of action would cause a crime to be committed. This is what the prosecution goes toward for intent to see if this if this person's intent is of a bad ilk. And, you know, I talk a lot about um, having stupid sayings on your t-shirts or, or bumper stickers on your car. There was a self-defense event two or three years ago down in Rochester, Minnesota, where a good Samaritan was trying to help someone um, in an accident. And those two got into a conflict. And part of the criminal complaint in Rochester was that this guy had a bumper sticker on his car says gun control means hitting your target. You know, sayings like that, uh, um, insured by Smith and Wesson, um, smile, wait for a flash, all those type of things are going to put uh, a, a spin on what your intent is. What you write in Facebook, YouTube, all your comments. All that stuff is going to be going toward your criminal intent. What is going on in between the ears right here? All right. If you have a Punisher plate on the back of your Glock and you're in this, this situation, it's not looking good for for you because when we when we talk about the intent, it is all about what is the jury going to think of you. What was your intent? with having all these stupid sayings on t-shirts, etc. Now we're going to play this video and you tell me if this kid came to Kenosha, Wisconsin to create havoc and kill somebody. Uh, you're obviously an armed and uh, you're in front of this business we saw burning last night, so what's up? So people are getting injured and our job is to protect this business and part of my job is also to help people. If there's somebody hurt, I'm running in the harm's way. That's why I have my rifle. These guys up on the roof. Their job is to fight over Washington and protect me. Gotcha. They're protecting everybody on the roof. Understood. And we're running medical. We're going in and we're getting And what about, are you, are you from the area? I am from the area. 
what brought you out here tonight? You just wanted to provide medical attention? Provide medical attention to people that need it. Somebody's injured. Like, you get hurt, I'm grabbing you. Have you encountered any issues yet thus far with law enforcement or anything like that? No, we all over the territory. So, we went to the church and we asked where the situation was going to be. This church right over here. And we stopped it by a while while we were down at school. Wow. Do you think it would have been different if the police had to try to stop them from, from setting the fire? I feel like there would be a lot more casualties than a lot more people do. So I think we should find out if I had. Now this part of the the video is we're going after the video of his innocent standard again. This is after he's had the encounter while he was on his his backside. Would a criminal go toward the police line and try to, to, to turn himself in? Would that happen? Absolutely not. Now, I want to put this in there is because this was the original video that I had of Joseph Rosenbaum telling the group, Kyle's group, to shoot him N-word. Okay? It's he is the prophet. He he is the one who is the initial aggressor. He's the one who is provoking people to shoot him. All right, we're going to be going over that style a, a little bit later, but this is a video of of Joseph Rosenbaum initial conflict with Kyle Rittenhouse's group. If you notice in the previous video. Kyle said that they uh, stomped out a fire earlier. Well, this is going to be kind of the same thing. And Joseph Rosenbaum's fire. I don't know if he started the fire. The video doesn't show that. But what happens, well, you'll see it. We'll just go from here. Here's Kyle. He's running with the fire extinguisher. All right. He was putting fires out. All right. There's Joseph Rosenbaum right there. He was pushing the dumpster, and one of Kyle's people put out the fire. Well, there you have it. He was, Joseph Rosenbaum was irritated at Kyle's group for, for putting out the fire. All right. This is his provocation. This was his, his intent toward anybody in that group. He was going to usurp his will on anyone in that group. And when Kyle and that other guy went to look again for if anybody was hurt, they came across Rosenbaum. And Rosenbaum went after him, all right? Kyle was not the initial aggressor. Now, when I originally made this slide, um, that was a question if he was the initial aggressor. 
You know, was he, did he provoke the fight? So even if we went under that assumption, it's, it's simply not true because if you are, if you started the fight, now we just assume if we started the fight, what the law will allow is that you can regain your innocent standard by backing off and, and communicating to the people that, hey, you know, something, I, I don't want anything to do with this. And this bears out in Wisconsin's Criminal Code 939.48, Self-Defense and Defense of Others. Provocation affects the privilege of self-defense as follows. To provoke others to attack him or her and thereby does provoke the attack and not entitling to claim the privilege of self-defense against the attack. Except when the attack which ensues is a type causing the person to engage in an awful, uh, uh, unlawful conduct to reasonably believe that he or she is imminent danger of death or great harm. Basically what that means is that if you are the original uh, uh, attacker, let's just say that you shove somebody, but the other person comes at you with a deadly force, you can use deadly force to defend yourself. Okay, and that's basically what what happened is when Joseph was going after Kyle and trying to take the gun away. A reasonable person could conclude if that gun was out of Kyle's hands that it would be a deadly threat possibility. I mean, it, it's just right there. In such a case, a person engaging in the unlawful conduct is privileged to the act of self-defense. There you go, what I was talking about. And here we go. Unless the person reasonably believes he or she has exhausted every other reasonable means to escape. And that's exactly what Kyle did. He was running away from Joseph Rosenbaum. He was trying to get away from him. Joseph Rosenbaum threw something at him. And the, the criminal complaint says it was a, a plastic bag. No. Rosenbaum wasn't carrying a plastic bag with nothing in it. There was something in it of, substan of, of, uh, of substance. Okay? And at that same time, Kyle would have heard some gunshots behind him, all right? And that isn't going to be an important element. So let's go over uh, Section B. The privilege lost by provocation may be regained if the actor, in good faith, withdraws from the fight and gives adequate notice thereof uh, to his or her assailant. We were already talking about that, all right? Backing off, all right? So even if Kyle was the initial aggressor, you can reset it by getting away and trying to retreat until you couldn't retreat anymore, where um, the reasonable means to escape was no longer possible. So the people are out there saying that he was the initial aggressor, which it basically proves, the, the previous two videos prove, that he didn't have the mentality of going there to shoot somebody. And, Ro and Rosenbaum was so irate at this group for putting out his fire and having his little barbecue fun that he went after Kyle, all right? That was the men's ray. So, again, let's go over Kyle Rosenbaum, all right? Was he an initial aggressor? Yeah. Was he a pro uh, uh, he was, did he provoke the fight? Oh, absolutely. By saying, shoot me, N-word, you are provoking the fight, and there is a statute to cover that, 93948. A person who provokes an attack, intend to use such an attack to excuse or cause death or great by harm, n is not entitled to claim a privilege of self-defense. And notice in the statute that it does not give him an out where he can back off and say, uh, you know, I don't want anything to do with this. Ah, uh, it doesn't say that. He is not entitled to claim, a, uh, claim the privilege of self-defense. You know, there's two sides to the story. There's Kyle's uh, side of the story, and Joseph has the exact same duty to retreat if he feels like he's in great day, uh, death or great bodily harm as Kyle. So, uh, again, let's go through the, the duty to retreat. Wisconsin is a duty to retreat state outside the home. Now, there, are, when lawyers go look for answers, they look in three places. They look at the statutory language. They look at the black letter law. They look at case uh, case law, and they also look at jury instruction. All right, Wisconsin jury instruction criminal eight ten says for it is a duty to retreat instruction to the jury. Now, what happens is with the 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 jury instruction, what happens is lawyers get together 
and they boil it down of what the law is, and then they tell the jury what the law is. And this is their verbiage. There is no duty to treat. However, in determining whether the defendant reasonably believes that the amount of force used was necessary to pre prevent or terminate that interference, you may consider whether the defendant had an opportunity to retreat with safety, whether such retreat was feasible, and whether the defendant knew of the opportunity to retreat. Even though that this rule says there is no retreat, the wording gives the impression that if you could safely retreat, you must do so. Well, hello, Joseph Rosenbaum. You had to do, you had a duty to retreat if you could safely do so. If you think that you were in death or great by harm from Kyle running away with a gun, you're wrong. You had a duty to retreat. Kyle had a duty to retreat. And guess what? He did. He did everything he can do to get away from you. You threw a bag at him. You, um, Kyle heard shots behind him during that incident. What would a reasonable person conclude once McGinnis said in the, in the uh, criminal complaint that it looked like basically Rosenbaum was trying to get the gun? A reasonable person would conclude that if Rosenbaum got the gun, that he would probably use it against other people or Kyle. Now, the, this all came from the criminal complaint. Again, read the criminal complaint. It, it reads like Kyle's lawyers wrote it up. Now, this all, the, all this happened after the Rosenbaum incident. All right? The third video of audio. A person could be heard yelling, sounds like, beat him up. Another person could be heard yelling, what sounds like he shot him. In the fourth uh, video audio, in this video, the person could be heard yelling, get him, get that dude. Then the male in a light-colored top runs toward the defendant and appears to swing at the defendant with hitting his right arm. This swing makes contact with the defendant, knocking his hat off. Okay. On the video, the, the male can be heard saying something to the effect of, what did he do? Another male could be heard responding something to the effect, he uh, just shot someone. Then a male can be heard yelling, get his ass. The defendant then trips and falls on the ground. Doesn't that read like a bunch of people are trying to get after Kyle? All right. He's running towards the police, uh, the police line. Okay. He is trying to get away from a mob that is getting angry because he defended himself against an agitated Rosenbaum, who again has a criminal history. Okay. We may talk about that a little bit later, and we may not. But he starts running. He uh, is attacked by a guy who swings something and hits his arm. A few seconds later, he trips and falls. Then you have the un unknown uh, person, unknown man, who did a flying leg kick to Kyle's head to try to make his brain escape his skull. Then the next person tried to use a skateboard to remove Kyle's brain from his skull. Then the next person came after him with a gun in his right hand. All of this is happening while people are saying, beat him up. Hey, he shot, hey, he shot him. Get him. Get that dude. What did he do? Just shot someone. Get his ass. Would a reasonable person conclude that you were in fear for your life or great bodily harm? The criminal complaint, again, is a narrative of self-defense. Now, <clears throat> there was some talk about, well, these people had a right to defend the third person. Whether the third person was Joseph Rosenbaum or um, Anthony protecting the unknown victim or Gage protecting Anthony or the unknown uh, uh, victim, this is why I talk a lot about third-party self-defense of an unknown person. You need to have the complete per picture. There are two ways states go after this. Reasonable perception and alter ego. Minnesota is an alter ego state where you take on that person that you're... You take on the persona of that person that you're trying to save, okay? If that person had to do the retreat, you had to do the retreat. If that person could not use... 
uh, lethal force, you couldn't use lethal force, okay? If that person wasn't the innocent person, you could not have a self-defense claim. You couldn't, uh, the perfect example of an alter ego state is that you were walking down the street, you walked around a corner, you heard a woman screaming, rape, rape, and you see two guys on them, and you started defending, uh, defending that girl. And it turned out that those were two cops trying to take out a, uh, a drug dealer. Oops, you're screwed, all right? Because you take on the persona of the person on the ground getting arrested. That person was lawfully detained, and you had, and she had no right of self-defense. Therefore, you have no right of self-defense to save her. Other states like Wisconsin is a reasonable perception uh, state, and we'll go over this right now. Um, Wisconsin statute is uh, 939.48. Subsection 4, a person is privileged to defend a third person from real or apparent or unlawful interference by another under the same condition by, by the same means as those under by which the person is privileged to defend himself or herself from real or apparent unlawful interference. Here we go. Provided that the person reasonably believes that the facts are such that the third person would be privileged to act in self-defense. Again, that's a reasonable perception. So if you are actually saying that Gage and Anthony and the unknown victim could go to the age of Rosenbaum or Anthony going after uh, uh, the third party for the unknown victim or Gage um, helping out Anthony. These people, if you truly believe that their intent was to protect a third party, I think it's kind of small because, especially um, for Joseph, there is a huge time sequence between Joseph on the ground and these tr people trying to uh, protect a third person of Joseph, or there be a, a more reasonable way that if these guys are actually thinking that they're trying to protect. But again, how can you protect if somebody is on the ground getting beat by a skateboard, Gage? How can you go up to him? Gage, Gage, um, um, held back a little bit, and then he went after it again, and that's when Kyle shot. Kyle specifically shot Rosenbaum because he was on him, grabbing the gun. He shot at the unknown victim because he was down on his back trying to prevent a flying lead kick to the, to the head. Kyle, while on the back, was trying to protect himself from a guy using a skateboard to his head. Anthony Huber died of the result by a shot straight into the heart. All right. Gage went after Kyle while he was still on the ground and was going to shoot him according to his friend's Twitter account, say he was going to kill the guy and he got shot in the bicep, and it, it was pretty gruesome. It looks like the bicep was um, shot uh, completely off, okay? So there is also jury instruction toward this. I'm not going to read this jury instruction. Uh, again, jury instruction, uh, criminal 830, defense of the third party, basically goes over what I just said. But the, the, the interesting thing, to pause it if you want to read it, it is a good read, especially down here, a belief may be reasonable even though mistaken, okay? So if you truly believe that you were in third party and you were trying to save these people because Wisconsin law, reasonable perception, will eliminate you from criminal culpability if you truly believe that you were defending a third party, which I don't think this, this narrative bears out. In determining whether the defendant's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what the person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in the defendant's position under this, the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. The reasonable of the defendant's belief must be determined from the standpoint of the defendant at the time of his act and not from the viewpoint of the jury now. Okay? But the, the other one is Cal Crim, excuse me, Wisconsin criminal... Um, uh, jury instruction 835 basically basically it goes over the same thing but it has a caveat 
that caveat is if the position the person that you are defending is the initial aggressor is the uh, provocation by that defendant you have certain culpabilities but it still gives you an out under reasonable perception you should consider whether that person provoked the attack a person who engages in unlawful conduct of the type likely to provoke others to attack and who does provoke an attack is not allowed to use or threaten to use in self-defense against an attack a person a person who provoked the attack whether by lawful or unlawful conduct with the intent to use such an, an attack as an excuse to cause death or great by harm to another person is not entitled to use or threaten to use self-defense however even as said person had provoked the attack, the defendant would still be allowed to act in defense of that person if the defendant actually and reasonably believes that that person was entitled to act in his or her defense. Again, reasonable perception. I don't think it bears out here. I think these people, I think the unknown victim was an aggressor. I think Anthony Huber was an aggressor. I think Gage Grosskreutz uh, Gross was an aggressor, and this nonsense of protecting a third person is nonsense. Now, in the criminal county complaint on page five, Kyle talked. Kyle Rittenhouse talked to the police. It says statements by the defendant which are made contrary to his penal interests. It's going to be interesting if that video leaks or the audio leaks to see exactly what is what he said and we will go from there okay I think this is going to be drawn out for two or three years um, to get out of the election cycle the bad thing about it is is Kyle will be going to jail he probably will stay in jail for until his trial date and if so when he does get convicted for the gun charge um, it'll probably be time served and we will go from there now there are a lot of other videos out there there's a lot of other misconceptions um, out there and wrong statements and this is always uh, predicated on the information that we have now all right my name is Jeff this is to a self-defense law I hope this helped